Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Estilos with The Spiel on Entertainment, and I'm here with Julia Hart, the CEO of Elite World Group, one of the world's biggest and most successful talent management agencies. But today, she is here to talk with us about her new Netflix series coming up called My Unorthodox Life. Julia, it's a pleasure to chat with you. Thank you, Tim. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm glad you like the name of the th show, The Spiel. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Well, you know, in just a few short years, you have become a rock star in the world of model management, as well as becoming a successful businesswoman. Tell us how all of that fits into the format, the, the, the foundation of this show. Oh, I love that question. That's great. Uh, honestly, what you said is exactly how I feel that the past has informed my present in the sense that. I took over this company, uh, I'm co-owner and CEO, because I realized that we are sitting at a moment where the talent has the power because they have the audience. And so if I can systematically and organizationally help them build themselves into brands, give them the back end data and analytics, the production, the distribution, the marketing, the photographers and videographers to truly transform themselves into brands and networks, the day that they stop playing tennis or walking a runway or being an actor or a singer, they are still a brand. And so they have financial independence and longevity in their career. And to me, I would love to create an army of financially independent women. And everything I do today is based on the fact that I didn't have that ability, that I wasn't allowed to make decisions on my own, that I had no way to make to be financially independent. And so feeling that way, freedom for me is everything. And now I would like to help as many women feel that way too. And that's one of the aspects of the show that I love. But one of the other key aspects of this is that your journey to this point to have that sort of power really was very difficult in the coming because of your previous um, Orthodox religious life. Tell us about some of the challenges, especially for those of us not familiar with how restrictive it is for women and for some of the men. I great. Well, I love your questions. Um, so, you know, you have to realize it isn't, it's nothing to do with Judaism because the things that I'm going to say, I can explain what happened to me, but these same issues and problems exist in every fundamentalist culture around the world. So this has zero to do with Judaism. This has zero to do with my community. This has everything to do with fundamentalism. And you have to realize that I love my, the people in my community. I, I've learned so many beautiful things, loving kindness, generosity, community, taking care of one each other, charity, gratitude. This has nothing to do with Judaism. But fundamentalism, on the other hand, I'm a time traveler. That's how I view it. Like if you think there was that movie with Meg Ryan and Hugh Jackman, um, oh, you know, he's an elevator. Uh, he invents the elevator. He comes through a time hole and he lands in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt like. So through that journey, you're not the only one going through it in this show. What I found to be so wonderfully enlightening is that you're also helping uh, your four children through it, two sons and two daughters, and their individual journey through this, this background, if you will. So honestly, you know, because I went through it myself for them, it was much easier in the sense that when I was 35 and started questioning, I also started loosening those fundamentalist things. So they had a little bit more exposure than I did. But when I mean exposure, you know, my community is a massive range of exposure, but it's still face pressed against the glass at the bakery door. You can smell the scents, but you're not tasting the cookies. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to get to that place, to open that bakery door, to walk in and order that croissant, it's every person's journey is different. And so my, what I saw as my purpose was to just give them the exposure, show them what the world could be, and they can walk into that bakery at their own pace. And someone might want a ham and cheese croissant, and someone might else might want a cinnamon danish. It's up to them what they choose to do with their life. My goal was to just open the door. 
what I like about this series, and I saw five episodes of it last night. Oh, is that it, oh yeah, I binged on it, my dear. Ooh, I binged on hey. it. Loved it. Is thank that you. the the show has an authenticity that I'm not a big fan of reality TV, but this one won me over because there's an authenticity, there's a sincerity, especially when you're dealing with your your children and and talking with them. Tell me how that important that is for you to convey that. Incredibly important, Tim, and I really appreciate that you that you pointed that out because I think the only reason that it feels that way is because it really was that way, and it's really because I had so much collaboration with Jeff Jenkins and his entire team. Like they realized that if this is going to work, I really do have to be an executive producer with them, and so I literally would share what the week was going to be, and we would film it, and that's why hopefully it does feel authentic because it predominantly is. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it's time for us to wrap up. I could chat with you forever on this, but it's an amazing show. You're an inspiration to so many women, as well as even men, including myself. Tim, so, thank you so much. Come visit me in New York. I would love to. I would love to. We've been talking with Julia Hart, again, the CEO of Elite World Group and just an amazingly successful woman. But you want to find out more about her unorthodox life premiering very soon on Netflix. Be sure to watch it. It's very, very good. <laughs> Thank you, Tim.